welcome. We do welcome you to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, Tulsa, Oklahoma. We are again uh, worshiping at the Yale Avenue Presbyterian Church. While uh, our church house is still damaged by the fire some weeks ago, we welcome you to this service of worship. Welcome, Welcome to St. Andrews. Please join with me, call to worship this morning. The Holy One, the defender of the poor and needy, calls us together now. We come thankful to be a part of this family of faith. God knows us well and calls us by name. We hear our name and respond to God's call. The love of Christ urges us to move forward on our journey.
Please join with me prayer of confession and silent prayer. Let us go to the God in prayer. O oh God, you call us to live in mystery, to walk by faith. Yet we long for plans with goals and schedules. It's hard to live by faith. You cause us to place our trust in you, to live according to your will. Yet we want life to make sense to us. It's hard to live by faith. It's not easy to accept your promise that everything old has passed away and the new is yet to come. Forgive us, help us to see. Assurance of God's pardon, God forgives us and sow the good news in tiny seed within us. We are forgiven. We can see new possibilities. Thanks be to God. Our reading today is from Mark, chapter 4, verses 26 through 34. Jesus also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground, and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with a sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables he spoke the word to them, as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. Scripture reading today is from uh, the Old Testament, from 1 Samuel chapter 15, beginning with the 34th verse, and then chapter 16, verses 1 through 13. Then Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house in Gabeah of Saul. 
Samuel did not see Saul again to the day of his death. Samuel grieved over Saul, and the Lord was sorry that he had made Saul king over Israel. But the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Now fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of this, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. So Samuel did what the Lord had commanded, and he came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came out to him trembling and, and, and said, Do you come peaceably? And Samuel said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves, come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. Now when they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or his height of his stature, because I have rejected him, for the Lord does not see as men see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then he called the next one, the second son, and he was rejected, and the third, and, and the fourth, and all the way down to the seventh. And Samuel said to Jesse, are, are all of your sons here? And he said, well, there does remain one youngest, uh, but he's out keeping the sheep. Samuel said to him, send and bring him to me, for we will not sit down until he comes here. So Jesse sent and brought him and now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. And the Lord said, Now this is the one, for this is the one. Anoint him. And then Samuel took the horn of oil, and he anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And from that day forward, Samuel then went back home to Ramah. Here ends our reading from 1 Samuel chapter 15 and the first part of chapter 16. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We want a king. We want a king. We want a king. Last week, we saw in the scripture that the Israelites came to Samuel and said, Samuel, we love you. You've been a great leader for us all these years, but we want you to retire and give us a king like all the other countries have a king. We want a king. And Samuel's feelings were hurt. 
he had felt like he'd done a good job as a judge and a spiritual leader and a prophet all these years, and, and now they're rejecting him. And, and not only that, but the traditional Israelite religion believed that God was king. There was no need for a, a human king. And in fact, having a human king was a, a an expression of doubt, not trusting in the Lord. So Samuel was hurt. He went to the Lord in prayer, and the Lord said, in effect, you're right. A, a, a king will draft all the men, make slaves of the women, uh, confiscate your property, tax you, and do all these bad things. But listen to him. Give him a king. They want a king. Give him a king. So Samuel was led by the Lord to Saul. And Saul became the first king of Israel. But very soon, very soon, Saul went his own way. He did not listen to Samuel. He, he did not follow the words of the Lord. And it says in the scripture reading today, that the Lord was sorry that he had chosen Saul as king. And from that time on, Samuel and Saul never saw each other. They each one went back to their own homes and they stayed apart. And Saul was on his own and Samuel grieved for Saul. Samuel didn't want a king. But he had anointed Saul, so he was grieving for what has happened to Saul. But the Lord in our scripture today comes to Samuel and says, quit your grieving, quit your moaning, quit your whining, get up and I want you to go to Jesse and one of his sons you are going to anoint as the new king of Israel. Now, you think how Saul reacts, I mean, Samuel reacts to that. I, I can't do that. If Saul finds out that I'm anointing uh, his replacement, he'll kill me. A and God works out a trick. Technically, he tells the truth, but actually it's a deception. He says to Samuel, take a heifer with you. And, and tell people you are going to Jesse's family to make a sacrifice to the Lord. So that's what he does. And when he gets there, they all get together and, and one by one, Samuel interviews and looks at each one of Jesse's sons. He goes through the first and he thinks he's a strong, muscular young man. He will make a good king. And the second and the third and all of them. And God says, you know, you human beings, you put so much emphasis on appearance. I, the Lord, look at the heart of a man. I look at the heart. That, that was a lesson for Samuel and for David, but it's also a lesson for us, isn't it? How often in our society do we focus on appearances, on, on the way a person looks, on, on the code words they use, all the superficial things? God looks on the heart. God looks on what's inside a person rather than what's outside. We, we live in a culture that emphasizes appearances, emphasizes naming people. You either are this or you're that. You are with us or you are against us. You look like us or you don't. God looks on the heart, not what's outside, what is, is so visible to us. 
Have, have you noticed, if you've been around a number of years, the difficulty that we in our culture have had about how to identify people? Back when I was growing up, we referred to Negroes, and Martin Luther King referred to Negroes, but then that became kind of unpopular. So there was black, and then there was African American, and then Afro American, and, and then there were other groups of people. So now we have the reference to people of color. Does that make any sense to say that somehow we are all identified by our color? I don't think so. And certainly God does not either. God looks on the heart, not what is outside of us. Now, we noted last week that there was a certain tension within the story. God was opposed to the people wanting a king, and yet he said three times, listen to them, give them a king. Uh, apparently, even within God's personality, if we could say that, he was willing to see things both ways. King, no king. We notice that a hymn talks about God stooping to our weakness and giving us what we want, maybe even what we we need. And, and here in this story, there is a similar tension within God. Because God says, I don't look at the exterior. I don't look at those superficial things. I judge a person by the heart. And then did you notice what is said? When David is anointed, the narrator describes David as handsome, with beautiful eyes and, and ruddy. Probably they mean he is tanned because he's been outside with the sheep most of his life. Beautiful eyes and handsome. That sounds like the appearance rather than the heart, doesn't it? So perhaps even God is impressed by appearances sometime. But surely the word for us in a society that emphasizes labels and appearances and the way we look, that God judges us by the heart. And as David was anointed, he was filled with the Spirit to become the king. You and I as Christians are anointed with the Spirit on that upper room on Easter Sunday in John, Jesus comes to the disciples and it says that he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit as the Father has sent me, so I send you. We are empowered by the Holy Spirit to share our faith, to, to live out our love as David was empowered by the Spirit to become king. Not someone who looked mighty and powerful and strong, but someone who was empowered by the Spirit. Saul was described as being from a wealthy family, and he was a head taller than anyone else. external appearances. And David was the seventh or eighth son of Jesse, not even invited to the party. And yet God chose him. God chooses you and me and, and, and uses us for his service. Some of us are called to be pastors, some of us are called to be missionaries. Some of us are called to be teachers and, and, and businessmen and workers, but we are all called by God and empowered by God to be his hands and feet and voices in this world. But 
You know, there's something else about this passage that will become more obvious to us as the weeks go on and we read more about David. He was anointed that day, but he didn't suddenly become king. There was a long period of time that he gradually worked into that role of becoming king. And I think that's a reminder that we not only do not go by appearances, we also do not expect instantaneous results. The story from the New Testament, the parables Jesus taught about the seeds growing and the mustard seed, that a little tiny seed that becomes a huge bush is a reminder that <clears throat> we need to be patient. We need to allow time for God's work to develop. You and I, you and I tend to be impatient. We want what we want, and we want it right now. God has a different schedule. Our whole society is almost instantaneous, isn't it? Years ago, you had to use the post office. Now you can do almost anything you want by using your phone to text, to call, for email. And, and, and we, expect, we expect everything to work that way. We become impatient with God working things out. I was reading an article about businesses a while back, it had nothing to do with the church or scripture, but it, it was talking about the problem that our finances in the world have, have evolved into a, a sense of short-term gratification so that CEOs of corporations work for the next quarterly report. They, they can't work long-term, they can't, uh, say to uh, resist uh, paying out enough dividends to impress the stockholders because if they don't do that then people will will abandon them a and there was an article that said we need to get the people that have a long-term vision longer than this quarter or this year to <clears throat> be willing to invest in companies. Uh, pension funds, for example, have a long-term view. They need to have the sufficient funds to take care of uh, the pensions of people 10 and 20 and 30 years ago uh, from now. Life insurance companies are the same way. They should invest for the long term a and we should be looking at the long term, planting seeds today that will bear fruit many years from now. I remember hearing a missionary as a young man. He had been in, I think, what is modern Iraq, uh, working among Muslims. And I think he was there for several decades before he finally retired, came back to the United States. In that whole time, I believe he said, three people had come to Christian faith. Three people in 30 or 40 years. But he was planting seeds of the gospel and allowing God to bear that fruit. David, David was anointed to be king. You and I are anointed as Christians to serve him and to bear fruit for him, to live out our life so that others come to know and love as we have come to know and love. Not based on the appearance, not based on short-term in instantaneous results, but knowing knowing that in Jesus Christ, in the Holy Spirit, God has called us 
as he called David. God has used us as he used David. Even in our imperfections, we are God's people. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we and our whole society is so focused on appearances and instantaneous gratification that we, we have a hard time focusing on the heart, focusing on your presence with us, focusing on your promises to be with us. We want results now. Lord God, give us patience. Give us endurance. Give us a willingness to serve these days and all the days to come. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Once again, we are glad that you joined with us in worship this day. As we come together, we are reminded that we are all part of the body of Christ. We are all part of his people. And we are blessed and empowered, as was David. And then we go out our separate ways to serve. And as you go, we pray that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, communion, fellowship of the Holy Spirit will go with you day by day. In Christ's name, amen.